Now that we have our GUI mocked up, let's go ahead and hook it up and make it do something. Um, before I do that, though, I noticed a couple of things while I was editing the previous video. So first thing is this root.title. This is not right. So if I go ahead and run it, you see there's actually nothing in the title bar here. This is actually a method, not a property. So that should work. Let's try it now. Yeah, so now I have the title set. And the other thing I noticed was I messed up the sticky a little bit. So the two end, the two labels should be sticky east, not the two volts things. So this label and this label should both be sticky east. And it should look the same, but this is correct and the other wasn't. Um, uh, except I put that in the wrong place. That should go on the grid here. So volts label dot grid ohms label dot grid. That's where it should be. OK, so let's go ahead and try that. Good. Um, all right, so 150 and it doesn't do anything. So in order to make these do something, I want to hook commands up to these buttons. And a command is just a function that gets run when the button is clicked. And I can specify the command right here where, where I create the button. So here's where I create the clear button. I'm going to add a command. And what I, the function I want to run is actually going to be a method on my application class. Um, so self is my app object dot clear. So this is going to be the method that gets run when they click on the clear button. And command equals self dot calculate is going to be when they click on the OK button. And if I run it now without having defined these, I get an error because there is no clear method on simple calculator app. So let's go ahead and stub those in. So there's a clear method. And right now it's not going to do anything. And then there's a calculate method. And that also isn't going to do anything, but it will let me run my program. OK, and then let me go ahead and put a print statement. And then I don't need these passes anymore. All right. So if I hit OK, I get calculate. And if I hit clear, I get clear so I can see those methods are running. All right. So let's start with the calculate method. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get the values out of the two entry boxes for ohms and volts. And so in order to get access to those entries, I want to make them properties on my app object. So just like I did with this self.main window as a property so that I could call um, app.run and it would be able to find the main loop method of main window right there. I'm going to do the same thing here with my two entries. So self ohms entry is equal to ohms entry and self dot volts entry equals volts entry and then here in my calculate method I can print calculate and then let's do self dot ohms oops Ohms entry get to get the value. Uh, so calculate ohms colon and then volts colon is self dot volts entry dot get. So that should be all I need to see those values. So we'll do 150. Click OK. And sure enough, I get my values. Now, these are strings right now. 
and I need them to be numbers. Um, and I don't want the program to crash if somebody types something invalid in there. So for example, if I try this right now, I'm going to do 100E and hit click. I get volts, but if I tried to turn this into a number, I would get a crash. So what I'm going to do is use try except around the actual calculation itself. So try, and then I'm going to do ohms is float, this thing here. And volts is float, this thing here. And then I can calculate amps, which is volts over ohms. And I can calculate watts, which is amps times volts. And then if any of these things doesn't work, I can just print got an error and then return. And then if I do get here, whoops, if I do get here, that means that all this stuff happened correctly. And so I can print volts. Actually, let's just print um, amps, amps, comma, watts, watts. OK. So 100 volts and 50 amps. So my calculation works fine. If I get an error, like for example, I do that, I got an error. Or if I leave this blank, I get an error. Or I'm, since I'm dividing by ohms here, if I put zero here, I get an error. If I put one here, it works correctly. OK, so that's good. So now I want to show my result. And in the example program, I have another, a second window pop up when that happens. So I'm going to create a method here called um, show answer. And it's going to take a piece of text, which is the answer text. And it's also going to take a parent frame. So let's do parent and text. And then I want to, let's actually look at what it looks like in the other one. So 100 by 50. So I have a label here um, that looks just like the label that I did for the other window. Um, and then just a blob of text with new lines in it um, that's center justified. Um, so let's go ahead and do one of those. So the first thing I need is a frame. So ttk.frame parent. And we'll go ahead and put the same padding in as the other one. So that's 10 pixels all around. And then we're going to do our label. So that's a header label is equal to ttk dot label. And then parent is root frame. And then the text is going to be the answer or your answer or whatever. And then we're going to do a font, which is the same font as we used before, Arial Bold 16. Okay, and then we're going to grid this thing. Actually, we need to grid this thing. So this is going to be root frame dot grid column zero row zero. And this is going to be 
header label grid column zero row zero of the root frame. And then we're going to have another answer label is a label in root frame, the text text is equal to text that we passed in this thing right here. And then I'm not going to set the font. I'll just use the default. I think there's a justify, which is equal to a constant on TK called center. Okay, and then let's go ahead and put that in the grid. So answer label dot grid. So same column and then the next row. And then let's go ahead and uh, we might need some additional padding, but let's go ahead and see. So that's going to create an answer frame inside of here. And then the trick to having a second window is basically, so we're running our GUI by calling this main loop on the main window. And you only really have one main loop at a time. So we are going to continue using this main loop, but we're going to add some stuff to the main window. So we're going to make it look like it's a separate window, but it's still going to be under this main window as far as the main loop is concerned. Um, and that's magically going to give us two windows that share the same main loop. And so the way I make this look like a separate window is by creating a child of the current main window using um, a top level frame. So top level frame is a special kind of frame that shows up in a new window. And, uh, and I'm going to do that right here. Actually, let's, let's, so this, yeah. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, um, do it right here. So we'll go ahead and say um, top two is new ttk.top. Actually, is it tk.top? Yeah, tk.top level. I give it my self.main window. So it's a child of my current thing that has the event loop. Um, and then I just call show answer. Actually, what did I call that? Yeah, show answer self dot show answer um, and then I give it the parent which is top two and I give it my text which is going to be um, uh, a piece of text so let's go ahead and make a piece of text here And let's actually look at what. So I'm just going to duplicate this basically. So I got uh, the formatted string for the number of volts. So let's do volts stir volts plus volts running through plus stir ohms ohms would be colon backslash n and then plus actually two blank lines And then here I'm going to format the result to two decimal places for amps. So that's colon dot two f amps backslash n and colon dot two f watts dot format amps watts. Okay. Oh, I was going to put that in here, but I forgot. All right. Confused myself. 
Um, so let's go ahead and try that and see what happens. Okay. Um, that looks pretty much like what I had before. So I think I added some more padding around here, um, but I think this looks okay, so I'm not going to bother with that. Um, and then I want to do the same thing if I had an error. So here I'm going to do top two is tk.top level self.main window. And then we're going to self.show answer top two. And then this is going to be, let's go ahead and generate the error message and see what that looks like. Okay, so let's move that down. Okay. Okay, and that should be it. So go ahead and comment that out. And comment that out. And go ahead and run. Close all this stuff. So let's get an error. Okay. And let's put some values in here. Actually, let's just do that one. And then let's do this one. And that looks fine. All right, so the only thing that we have left is hooking up this uh, clear button. And uh, to do that, we're going to use a delete method on entries. So this is a little simpler than using a string variable. But self dot ohms entry dot delete, and then this takes two arguments. It takes the first thing and the last thing, and basically we're just going to delete everything from the first character, which is zero, to the end character, which I can use tk dot end that constant there to mean the last character. So this is going to delete everything in the entry box. And then we're also going to do that same thing with volts entry. And that should be it. So let's go ahead and try it. And clear. OK. And then let's do 100 by 25 is 400 amps. And 100 by 100 is 100 amps. I'm sorry, 100 watts rather. So this all looks like it's working. Let's clear and let's do 4.2 volts and 0 0.5 ohms. It's 35.28 watts. So everything looks good.